Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z. I'm back today with an update, another update on my 1979 payoff pitch season. Uh, today we're going to talk about the halfway point because we have played 81 games. Uh, we are at game 82. However, one of them was uh, rained out and it was never played and the stats were never kept. So we've moved on to to what was the uh, we're up to what was the 82nd game of the season for the White Sox, but 81 played so that I could do a nice clean um, um, you know, projection of how many at bats and how many innings pitched and what the team's pace is and what the team is on a pace to do and all of that good stuff because you play 81 games. And you have 162 in a season, you're halfway there. You just have to double everything. So uh, you can see that that's where we are. Um, tried to make the uh, spreadsheet a little bigger, the size, so that you can see things a little better. This is the uh, general team batting right here. Here's the uh, batting averages, the on-base percentages of everybody. Um the number of at-bats that they have. So I'll just, as I scroll down that, I'll let you guys take a look at it. You can see what everybody is hitting at-bats here. On base percentage here, um, or uh, batting average here, on base percentage here, and at-bats, the number of at-bats that they have. And in a minute, we will take a look at what pace this puts everybody on and where I am as far as uh, seriously overusing some players, which I am doing, um, but I think that just comes with the territory. Um, again, my intent here was not to replicate the 1979 season for the White Sox and see how close the game comes to it. The intent was to see if I could do better with the team with only like minor adjustments, minor tweaks, doing things maybe a little differently, maybe could have helped the team. Um, now you can see right here, we're hitting 256 as a team with a 308 on base percentage. That is, as you will see, lower than what we actually did, what the team actually did in 1979. Um, now here's the pitching. You've got the wins and losses here, the games pitched, the game started, and the innings pitched. And again, we will discuss who I'm way ahead with and who I'm like right on pace with and who I'm behind with as far as the pace goes. Um, and, uh, you know, we just take a quick look at some of these guys. You know, we can go back and examine some of these in depth um, in a minute. So you can see right now we're 43 and 38. That's our record. At this point in the schedule, we with one last game played, we were 34 and 47. Um, and here is here's what how it all breaks down for the team. We are batting two. We we did the team did bat 275 with a 333 on base percentage, and as I said, we're actually hitting like 256 with a 308. But this is interesting. The team had 127 home runs in 1979, and we're on a pace to have 128. So right there, that's that's pretty much spot on. Uh, the team record was 73 and 89 in 1979. Right now, we're on a pace to be 86 and 76. And as you can see right here by this little note that I put here, that would put a second finishing second in the West, two games behind California. Now, I don't know if we can keep that up. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm not so sure that the schedule in the second half is any more difficult or easier than the schedule in the first half was. So we'll see how that works out. Um, now, one thing I did want to point out, you'll see some of these players are in dark font. The players that are in dark font are more or less statistically, not as far as their usage goes, but their statistics, like for a pitcher ERA, for a pitcher um, whip, for a batter batting average on base percentage. The, the uh, players that are in dark font are more or less doing a 
about pretty close to what they actually did in 1979. So Fred Howard statistically, um, and you can see, let's, you know, let's go down here. Um, so he has a 327 earned run average and a 155 whip. You can see Ed Farmer has uh, a uh, 231 uh, bat, or a 231 earned run average and an 089 whip. Proley, Mike Proley in relief has a 415 uh, ERA and a 132 whip. And Trout has a uh, a 369 earned run average and a 130 whip. So those numbers, they're not exact, but they're they're close enough, uh, you know, for government work. And then uh, the same thing can be said. Oh, in the batting, it's interesting, in the batters, really the only two that are, you know, in the ballpark of what they actually did statistically, and even in Greg Pryor's case, how he's how much he's being used. Uh, the only two are Lamar Johnson and Greg Pryor. Everybody else is either doing a lot better than they actually did, or they're doing a lot worse than they actually did. Um, so now let's take a look at some of these guys. We'll go over here. Now the the players in yellow, the pace at midseason, anything in yellow, that guy is way ahead of the pace. He's 120% or more ahead in the pace. So that applies to Bill Naharadny, who, and that's going to continue because he's actually, and he's one of the players who's doing a lot better than he actually did in real life. He's hitting 302 with a 358 on base percentage. He hits lefties much better than he does righties, and I do play him more um, against lefties than I do against righties. But you can see the players in blue, if it's in blue, they're either under the pace or they're like right on the pace or they're up to like 110% or something. And then the players who are listed in orange, the pace is on in orange, means that they're somewhere in between being overused and being reasonable. And, you know, right here you've got 118% Kevin Bell. Is that 118%? Now, down here, you got three guys in a row. Uh, they're way overused. Ralph Gar. Now, Steve Davis. Um, Steve Davis, I don't think really counts. He has four at-bats, but I think what he had that year was only four at-bats. So, yeah, 200%. But, that I mean, that doesn't really count. It's not like I'm going to use Steve Davis a lot. But Ralph Gar, yeah, 141% for him. And uh, Morrison, Jim Morrison is at 161%. And he also is tied on the team for home runs with 10. So, and he has 10 and 193 at bats. So the guy is, I mean, and it's crazy, like against one hand or the other, I'm, I, I'm thinking maybe righty, like against righty, his uh, wheelhouse is like, it's insane. It's like one to 93 home run or something. I had to double check that, but, uh, anyway, so yeah, I got a few guys that I'm way ahead on, um, you know, and then here's a couple that are 113 and 116, Claude L. Washington and Nord Hagen. Part of the problem with this is, um, the injuries don't seem to happen as much in the game as they do in real life. That's one thing I've noticed. Um, so if you don't sit a guy, if you don't take it upon yourself to be, uh, to manage as though you were managing real people who needed rest and who couldn't play every single day all season long, uh, you would have massive overusage in this game because injuries just don't tend to happen as much as they do in real life. And that's essentially true in a lot of the games that I've played. Um, Stratomatic is the same thing. If you play an entire Stratomatic season, guys are not going to be on the shelf as much and for as long as they are in real life. Um, so you're going to have to artificially factor that in and do it yourself, which is, I tried to do that to some degree, but I haven't been able to do it, um, you know, as to the degree that um, 
that it would, you know, that it would be reflected in the stats and the overusage. So that's part of why players are overused. Um, if we go to the starters here, the first five guys, um, as you can see right here, are Wortham, Trout, Kravak, Baumgarten, and Barrios. Essentially, those are my starting pitchers, and I try to stick to that formula. So you can see Barrios is at 123%, and uh, the second guy, Trout, yeah, Trout, is at 132%. But the other three guys are not too bad. One's at 116, but the other two guys are 83 and 107. Uh, you got 183% here for Dotson. I am using Dotson a little more than um, the White Sox did in 1979. Again, I don't think I'm going crazy. He's only appeared in four games. He started all four, but he's only been in four games in the first half of the season. So I'm not trying to make... I'm not trying to say, oh, look, what would have happened if Richard Dotson had started all season long. We don't know that, and really his card would not uh, be based on what he might have done for an entire season. But he only he's only got four starts and 22 innings pitched. So, um, so that's, that's where we are at the halfway point. Uh, let me go back here. We'll look at some of the, the records. Here are the records against the teams that we've played so so far. We are three and two against the Orioles, three and two against Toronto, three and three against the Yankees, six and three against Cleveland, six and three against Kansas City, four and three. And see, this is where like some of this is happening, you know, of being ahead, being ahead of the win pace of 1979 is that um, yeah, we're doing well against Kansas City. We're doing a little better than 500 against Texas. Uh, we're doing a little better than 500 against California, and they won the division. So, you know, are we really that good? I mean, we're, is the team really that good? You know, I don't, and obviously in 1979, I don't think we were, but, um, but like we're, you know, we're two and five against the Twins and and we're three and four against Seattle. So those those were two games. We had a, a, a stint of like 12 games where we played Seattle and Minnesota. And in real life, I think we were like two and 12 in those games. We weren't two and 12 in the replay, but we we weren't good in the replay. So that's where you are with that. There, there's the records against uh, the teams. So what are your guys' impressions of this? I mean, again, I'm just trying to see if I could have done better with the White Sox right now. It looks like I'm going to be able to do better with the White Sox and get them to near the top of the division, if not the division winners. It'll be interesting if we win the division, if we come up with 89 wins. Uh, because California won 88, and right now we're on a pace to win 86. Um, again, I don't know if the second half schedule is worse or better than it was in the first half, um, but I'm still going to try to stick as much as I can to not overusing anyone else other than the players who are currently being overused, like Naharadney and, um, uh, you know, and, and some of the others. I mean, it's with some of them, it's just going to happen. It's That's just how it is. It's going to happen. So Naharadni is going to get overused. Um, you know, some of the pitchers like, uh, you know, like Barrios is going to get overused because I, one of the things that I'm doing differently than uh, Tony La Russa and Kessinger did as managers of the team is I'm not doing this mix and match and guys from the bullpen to the starting rotation to the bullpen to the starting rotation. I'm not doing that. I'm, I've, I've set on basically five starting guys. And then every once in a while, I'll slip someone else like Dotson or Britt Burns or something in there. But uh, basically I'm trying to go with just the five man rotation and keep, Proly, because that's what it was. Proly and Scarberry spent a lot of time flip-flopping between the rotation and the bullpen rotation, bullpen. I'm keeping those two guys in the bullpen. So 
uh, that's how it's going to be, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to stick to. And that may be, obviously, I mean, I would say that that's probably what's causing a lot of the disparity in the record. Not to mention the fact that, like I said, guys just aren't getting injured. You can see here, uh, Wortham is 7-7, seven and seven, Trout 7-6, seven and six, Kravex 7-6, and six, Baumgarten 6-5. and five. So nobody's doing too much better as far as starting pitching records than uh, around 500. I think where things are getting um, taken off is like we're winning, our relief pitching seems to be better. Scarberry's 3-1, and one, Hoffman's 3-1. and one. Um, you know, Proley's only at two and two. So I don't know. I mean, I don't, I just don't know how it's coming out 43 and 38, but that's what it is. So anyway, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll do another update probably halfway through the second half of the season, you know, three quarters of the way through. Uh, but for right now, that's where this team is. And, uh, I'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks out there about, you know, what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, what's causing the difference because it's going to be a massive right now. It looks like it'll be a massive difference. Um, something like 14 games better. So I'm going to leave you guys with the thoughts about that. We'll take another quick scroll down through the batting averages and on bases here. And then, uh, uh, look at the, uh, ERAs and the whips. See, like you can see the, the starting pitchers here, the whips are not generally not that good. One one thirty is okay. One sixteen is very good, but one sixty not good. One forty nine not good. One thirty four kind of average. So uh, that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z Bob Zolke, signing off.